Hello students. In the last video, we have seen Werner's theory of coordination compounds, but it has failed to answer the following questions. First one, why only few elements can form complex compounds? Second one, paramagnetic properties of the complex compounds. Third one, colored nature of the complex compounds. To overcome these questions, or to answer these situations, another theory is put forth. The theory is known as valence bond theory. It is abbreviated as VBT. As Werner's theory was depending on some principles, even this theory also depends on some principles. Let's go for uh, one by one. First principle is that the central metal atom or metal ion provides n number of orbitals. in its valence shell. The metal atom or the ion which is about to form the complex compound complex will provide a required number of that is n number of required number of orbitals in its outermost shell. The second one is These orbitals are n minus one b n s n p and even n d. The metal atom or ion will provide these types of orbitals. These orbitals undergo hybridization under the influence of ligands. Here the important point is these orbitals undergo hybridization. Hybridization means mixing of atomic orbitals. It is a imaginary process. Then these orbitals undergo hybridization to give to give equal number of new set of degenerate orbitals. Well, this degenerate stands for having equal energy. That means these are of different energies. Upon mixing, we will get all the orbitals with same energy, which are called as degenerate energy, degenerate orbitals. Then, next one is these degenerate orbitals align themselves in space to give a definite geometry. This is very much important. The central metal atom or ion provides n number of orbitals. These orbitals are either n minus 1d orbital or ns orbital or np or nd. These orbitals 
are of different energies therefore they undergo hybridization in the presence of ligands after hybridization all these orbitals will become of same energy such set of new orbitals are called as degenerate orbitals these are degenerate orbitals will align in space according to the hybridization to give definite geometry for example you look at this if uh, two orbitals are there like this they undergo repulsive interaction and uh, they repel each other so long till the repulsion becomes minimum that means if two orbitals are involved in the hybridization process their alignment will be 180 degree angle between them this is the most stabilized position for these two orbitals next if one more orbital is involved in say like this third orbital is involved in this is 90 degree and this is 180 degree therefore this orbital will push these two down so that the bond angle will become now 120 this is the most stabilized most farthest and stabilized situation for these atomic orbitals if one more orbital is involved in like this then it will be 90 degree and this will be 180 degree therefore it will push down therefore this will be tetrahedral geometry so on and so forth therefore these set of degenerate orbitals align in space to give definite geometry next one is with these degenerate orbitals the ligands undergo overlapping with lone pair of electrons to form ligand to metal bonding this bonding is called as this bonding is called as coordinate covalent bond which is directional in nature well these are the principles based on these principles some of the special characteristic properties of the complex compounds can be explained let me repeat if the question is like this mention the principles of valence bond theory you can write like this the central metal atom or ion produces n number of orbitals these orbitals are n minus 1 d n s n p n d like that these are of different energies therefore they undergo hybridization in the presence of ligands and the influence of ligands these are the mixing process which is called as hybridization upon hybridization we will get new set of orbitals with same energy for example if four orbitals are involved in mixing process then we will get four orbitals only the difference is earlier different energies now all have equal energies then new set of degenerate or, uh, orbitals are called as degenerate orbitals these degenerate orbitals will align in space so that a definite shape for the complex compound can be given with these degenerate orbitals ligands will undergo bonding by donating a lone pair of electron this is called as ligand to metal bonding some important points regarding uh, for uh, example here ligands are electron pair donors therefore they are called as lewis bases and metals are electron pair acceptors therefore they are called as lewis acids therefore according to lewis concept it is reaction between base and the acid therefore we can call it as a neutralization process is according to lewis theory so according to lewis theory formation of a complex compound is regarded as acid base reaction that is neutralization reaction now if the metal uses these n minus 1 d orbitals if n minus 1 d orbitals are utilized then such complex
upper dash, inner complex or low spin complex. Well, metal can use these inner orbitals most of the time in the presence of strong field ligands or simply strong ligands. It can utilize, if it utilizes ND orbitals, then such orbitals and such complexes are called as outer complexes or high spin complexes. This is possible or metal atom or ion can use the ND orbitals if weak field ligands are present. I repeat, if the metal uses N-1D orbitals then such complexes are called as inner complexes. If it utilizes ND orbitals then, it is, then such complexes are called as outer complexes. Inner complexes are, are due to the participation of strong ligand and outer complexes are due to the participation of weak ligands. Then question arises, what are these strong and weak ligands? The ligands are called as strong and weak according to the spectrochemical data. Okay, here the series is given in the NCRT textbook and uh, we will see that. Thank you.